welcome to this new video. Today we're going to talk about one of the best five stocks in the last 20 years and it has not been Apple, it has not been Amazon, neither has it been Google. The best stock has been Monster Beverage with 87,560% return. That's a hell lot. That's a hell lot. And the second one has been Tractor Supply with 45,750. This is still a lot compared to Monster. It's not a lot, but it's ridiculous. I do not know this one. And I do not know this one, but I do know this one. But let's go on with tractor supply. So if we go here, um, we can see free shipping, free standard shipping on top footwear brands. We can buy all kinds of things here. We can buy Carhartt, all other things. Some are pet essentials, weed control supplies, a successful hunt starts here, blah, 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 so on. But I assume we're all not that interested in that. Otherwise you would have clicked on another video, not on a video where we talk about stock analysis. One thing when it comes to tractors, they've such a shitty investor relation page. It's unbelievable. So what we we'll find here is about Tractor Supply. Tractor Supply is the largest rural lifestyle retailer in the United States. It has been passionate about serving its unique niche, targeting the needs of recreational farmers, ranchers, on all those who enjoy living the rural lifestyle for more than 80 years. First of all, I like they've been around for a hell lot of time. Second of all, they have 45,000 team members. Nice. They have 1,955 55 tractor supply stores, so there's a lot of growth potential. And 40 in 49 states, they have 174 Petson stores in 23 states. I do not know what Petson's is, but it sounds like a pet store, I assume. Well, we can see here in 2010, we had 10 billion, 10.62 billion in net sales, over 80 years service, one more than 1,900 stores, and more than 45,000 members. And we have clothing, equipment, tractor, pair, trailer parts, blah, blah, blah. You can see all those different stores. They are definitely mainly located on the East Coast, not so much on the West Coast. What I just want to say is Tractor Supply is just a US company, but I assume that they will be able to, <sighs> to move to other countries uh, like Canada or Mexico, maybe in the future, but now they are mainly focusing on the United States. And here we are already at the problem because if we go here on investor relations and then we go on presentations, which I mainly love to look on, we don't find an investor presentation. We find nothing. Uh-huh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Financial highlights, 13.4% net sales growth. This is nice. Diluted earning per share growth. This is also nice. 10.5 comparable store sales growth. This is really nice. 6% ticket growth. I do not really know what that's supposed to mean. 4.5% traffic growth and largest quarterly sales e-commerce. So operation highlights, where we can see all time high customer retention. This is really good. Corp side pickup, new customers. This is also nice. 21 million plus neighborhood club members. I assume that's their customer club or a gaining share across all categories. That's nice. And 200 million in capital investments. This is nice. I always love investments. I mean, investments are super. Share buybacks, not super. Yeah, and that's been it. That's been all it. Because if we go back, and we go for example on the first quarter, if we find it, first quarter, go here on infograph, we can see that it's more or less been the same compared to the first quarter in 2020. They had a ridiculous big growth. First of all, what a surprise. Last year in 2020, first quarter, there was COVID-19. What the fuck? What a surprise. So this, this is why I actually want to see an investor presentation, but they don't have one. So we've got to deal with those t things here. And yeah, four quarters of triple digit growth e-commerce. But let's talk about e-commerce here in a sec. As I've said in my share Win Williams video, for all of those companies that are currently operating a lot in their uh, stores, like Sherwin Williams selling through Lowe's or Nike selling through all kinds of distribution centers or tractor supply selling through their stores. If they move into online and e-commerce and digital growth, how lot are they gonna make a lot of money? Cause they're gonna cut out the middleman. They're gonna save a ridiculous, 
ridiculously big amount of money. And I think especially for those stores here, for the stores like Sherwin-Williams or Tractor Supply that are not basic retailers, but, but retailing in that do-it-yourself, clean up your house, garden, whatever niche stuff or painting. E-commerce is a big and massive growth ahead. And that's what I love. So due to the lack of any further nice, interesting things, here's one more infograph from last quarter, 2020. Yeah, they made a lot of money and I like that. And they did increase their dividend quite good but we're going to talk about that later because we're going to go to trading view now and what we can see here is exactly that what i've talked about so last 20 years from here to there we had that tremendous growth and even if we go from here to there okay we did not have had that much growth but latest from here i mean who would complain making fourteen thousand nine hundred percent i mean this is this is still ridiculous. But again, as you most likely will already notice, mm -hmm. so as you will most likely already notice from watching my videos from here up here, amazing, amazing growth. That's what I love. That's what I like. That's from left bottom corner to the upright corner. That's what I love. If going a daily chart, we don't have all time high today, but we're close to it. And here again, we can see, sure, there's been a bounce back. There will always be bounce backs, but all in all, we had a nice growth from the left bottom corner to the right upper corner. Let's go to MarketWatch. We have a company that is worth 21 or 20, $21.5 billion. We have 115 million shares outstanding. We have a price earnings ratio of 25. This is cheaper than, for example, Sherwin Williams. We have a dividend yield of 1.1% and a dividend of $2.08 a year. Earnings per shares of $7.51. And if we go to financials, we can see that nice sales growth from 16 billion to that 10.6 billion. Let's see whether that is sustainable because we can see here that big growth of 27%. Let's see whether this is actually sustainable or whether it's just due to COVID. Then we can see a nice growth in EBITDA that's been more or less flat for a lot of for quite a while and then boom we had that nice jump here from 940 billion to 1.1 billion again let's see let's let's have a look whether that is sustainable or not what we also can see are that the shares the basic shares and the diluted shares are decreasing over time so they are buying back some shares let's see let's see whether they do this in a small way or in a totally stupid way so we go here Look at the dividend, they're continuously increasing their dividends and they're also buying back shares. The majority of money is moved towards buying back shares or the repurchase of common shares. So we see we here, I always check a few years. So basically here we would need 500 million free cash flow and here the same. And here we would need 600 or 700 million in free cash flow. And what we can see if we go on the last few years, Ah, oh, oh, should have done it like that. So does not fit, does not fit, does not fit. But here it definitely does fit in the last year. So we had around 525 billion, 1.1 billion free cash. Um, this is something I do not like, to be honest, that they're buying back, that they're spent more money on share buybacks than they actually have free cash flow. This is something I actually am really, really pissed about it. But... I've got to say, if I look at Tractor Supply as a company, let's just have a quick look on the dividend. As we can see, if we go back to 2010 or uh, let's say 2011, we can see a nice growth in the dividend over time. So it is all right. This is fine. This is nice. This is what I want to see. So totally fine with that. Um, so we're paying out more in dividends and share repurchase programs than we have in cash. This is something I do not like, but the issue is I tend to believe that a company like Tractor Supply is in their niche, in their specific niche, so strong that they will go and will continue to perform and that they will be able to grow and move on with that strong, successful 
history they had and with that strong successful system uh, history they had and that's been it so far i actually wish i could have shown you more but unfortunately tractor supply doesn't want i'm currently only long i think three or four shares but i will as well write a cash secure put as i will do on sherwin williams as i will do on soatis another company i will show you so please like subscribe leave me in the comments what you liked about the video whether you are a shareholder of Tractor Supply. Did you know that those five stocks we were talking about here, Monster, Tractor Supply, Old Dominion Freight Lines, Altria and Holly Frontier were the best ones, the best 20, uh, the best five performing stocks over the last 20 years. Did you not know that? Um, that's been it so far. I hope you enjoyed it and see you soon guys. Bye.